We've been talking to players, but how about this? We've got Coach Dagnalt joining us right in now. Person. In person. In person, face to face. <laughs> so far, it's been all over Zoom over this past season. Coach, what is this day like for you? How are you feeling right now? Uh, we're excited, obviously. You know, it's the beginning of the season. It's exciting to see all the guys, uh, you know, juiced up to get going in camp. And, you know, they've worked hard this summer, and they deserve this opportunity. And so we can't wait to roll the balls out tomorrow and see where we're at. Mark, so much of, of what we've talked about and, and really kind of one of the themes of, of the summer has been just normalcy, getting back to normal, getting players in routines, getting coaches back in routines. And I got to assume for you and the job that you're trying to do on multiple levels, that normalcy is a welcome sight and also something that's kind of critical for you to do the job that you want to do. Yeah, for sure. And, it, you know, I mentioned it in the press conference there, but the last season and a half has really been about enduring. It's about being resourceful. It's about being resilient. And it's stretched us and, and tested uh, kind of our muscles in those ways. But, you know, there is a sense of normalcy coming back. We're not there yet, obviously, and we don't want to be complacent with that. But uh, we have new opportunities from practice time to the blue to playing in front of our fans. Uh, and it's good to be back, you know, in a little bit of a rhythm. It was great to have kind of a normal summer as well, uh, or at least much closer to that. And so, you know, we're hoping that those pay dividends for us. But, you know, we're excited that things are starting to feel a little bit different. Mark, you mentioned the resilience and perseverance. And you had guys like Mike Mescala, veterans, to, to help, you know, uphold those things. But also a, a lot of young guys who really, over the course of the last couple of years, have done all the right things and really helped, you know, prop up those, those standards. How do you think that'll pay dividends heading into this season where there's some, some camaraderie and there's guys that really understand what it means to kind of carry the Thunder flag? Yeah, I mean, I think that the group certainly has a sense of that, and there's definitely a chemistry that's coming into the season that we haven't had, uh, certainly last season, you know, with the short off season and stuff like that. So um, it's exciting, and, and, you know, I think we have leadership up and down the roster. I think we have a group of young players that really do the right things and handle themselves the right ways. And, um, you know, that's pretty exciting. And, and we're not going to use age as an excuse when it comes to professionalism or competing or work ethic or those sorts of things. So uh, it's certainly helpful to have guys like Mike and Kemrich and Favors. Uh, but, you know, we have guys that certainly lean into uh, the right things and are capable of doing the right things, and we expect them to do that. There's just some optimism and vibrancy. I mean, we were just talking to Darius Baisley. He's like about to jump out of his skin. He's so excited to yeah. start playing and, and get practice going. Well, how does that feel for you to, to be the head coach and know that these guys are just eager to get on the floor and get to work? Yeah, I mean, I think people talk about the age of our team. And usually when external people are talking about it, they're talking about it in a negative light. But I think one of the strengths of having a young team is kind of that vibrant, youthful energy. And um, we certainly have that. You know, we have guys that are really, really excited to get going. They kind of have been through it. Guys like Bayes, he's been through it two years, and he knows how hard it is. He knows the challenges, and yet he's still excited. And so um, it's certainly awesome to see that. And, and, you know, it's our job to try to lay down a foundation and set standards, but really allow that to come to, to fruition as well, and we're going to do that. Coach, you got a handful of rookies coming in that you're going to get your hands on for the first time and, and kind of help them develop. What excites you uh, about this rookie class and what they might be able to contribute either early in the season, later in the season, or both? Yeah, I mean, they're going to contribute for sure, you know, with the way that the team is, is constructed and the players that they are. You know, they're definitely going to have their opportunities to do that. You know, what I would say is that there's kind of some staple things organizationally that are foundational for us to be tapping into as often as possible. But when you have players that naturally align with those things, I'm talking about professionalism, attacking the program, competing every single night, competing in a, in a team way, plugging into the team. We have four guys in this rookie class that really like naturally align with that. They don't need to be sold on that. They don't need to be educated on it. That's kind of who they are. And it's exciting when you bring people in uh, that can add momentum to what you already believe in. And, and I think in this particular class, we've done that. And they're four quality players that make the game easy for their teammates. Coach, we were talking about the normalcy, seemingly, of this offseason. One of those aspects is Summer League. And you got a chance to have that touch point with some of those young guys. Teo, Jeremiah, uh, Aaron Wiggins. What was that? How valuable was that experience for you as a coach and as a staff to have those touch points with those guys? Well, it was great. It gives you more information on them, and information's key early in their careers because you don't know everything about them yet. And uh, every new touch point is new information and gets you a little bit closer to feeling comfortable with who they are and what they need. 
uh, but it really made me appreciate Teo and Poku because those guys last year didn't have that, and they're international players. They're coming and playing over here for the first time. Right. Uh, and what they went through and, and endured last year is certainly going to help them in the future, but I remember being in Vegas and, and watching those guys thinking, man, like – it was tough, you know, for those guys at 19 years old to come into the NBA with none of this, you know, no fall buildup, no summer league, really no time in between the draft and, and the start of the season. And so uh, it's great to be back to normal there. The players coming in have benefited from it, uh, and it gives me a level of gratitude for those other two guys. They also didn't get a chance to play in front of fans last season. As a coach, how much does that excite you to have these fans back in this building? Yeah, I mean, that's like one of the most fun things about competition, especially for a player. You know, our, our guys are going to feed off of that, you know, on, on on the road and at home, you know, having fans in the stands. That's one of the most exciting things about the NBA, and these guys love that. And so that brings a lot of juice. I think it'll help you through the grind of an 82-game season. You know, the, the fans on a lot of nights over the years, I remember here, have really lifted the team up, and we're looking forward to getting that kind of boost from our fan base. And, and you know, our guys are pumped, and I'm happy for them. Mark, last thing for you, you know, you get SGA back, you're coming, kind of coming into the season a little bit more whole. What are you most excited for in terms of just the style of play, the identity that you're going to try to create on the floor this year as a team? Yeah, I mean, I think your style of play is kind of driven by your players, and I think our players are constantly evolving because of how young a lot of our players are. And so some of that is going to unfold naturally, and we need to give that the space to breathe and the space to unfold naturally. But the thing I'm most excited about is I really think it's important for us to be a team that competes and competes together. And I think we've got guys that really naturally align with that, starting with Shea, but across the roster. And, you know, with where we're at, that's going to be the staple of who we have to be every single night. Uh, we're going to be playing against teams that are, are wise, teams that are experienced, teams that have continuity, teams that have physical strength, teams that have been through playoff battles. And we need to stick our nose right in that fray. And in order to do that, you need competitive guys that are willing to band together. And I think we have that. Competitiveness has always been a hallmark of Thunder basketball. Mark, thanks so much for joining us today, and enjoy the rest of media day and practice starting tomorrow. Good to see you guys. Welcome Great back. Great to see you. Good go. to see you, Mark. Right. Thanks go. so much. We'll see you. That was Thunder head coach Mark Dagnall joining us. You are watching the Thunder Basketball Universe live stream podcast presented by Coop Aleworks. 